Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can create a really cool scene transition in our Phaser 3 game by using a geometry mask. With just a few lines of code and by using the built-in game objects and events in Phaser 3, we can easily create a really nice effect like the one here. So to create this cool effect here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and listen for our Phaser scene events to know when our scene is created. Once we have this event, we're going to go ahead and use a Phaser 3 tween to go ahead and create a smooth uh, animation to go ahead and reveal our scene by modifying our mask here, that circle, uh, in our game. Finally, we'll be taking a geometry mask and we'll be creating a circle from this and we'll be applying that to our camera and our scene. So then that way we can control what parts of our game are visible uh, through that defined mask. So before we get started, there will be a link in the description of this video to the police source code for this example, as well as a link to the starting source code if you'd like to follow along. In an example here, we'll be using Phaser version 3.80. Older versions of Phaser may work with this example, but it is recommended to be on at least this version. So if you are interested in following along, please go ahead and download that starter code template now and extract the files and open it in your IDE of choice. All right, so before we dive into the code that we'll be adding, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly go over the starting code template and what's available. Uh, so inside the readme, there'll be instructions on how to set up the project and run it locally. And the two main files we wanna focus on are gonna be our index.html and our main.ts file. Our index.html will be our web page that hosts our web game, and it has a link to our main.ts file. And so our main.ts file is our main entry point for our web application, and basically all we're doing in here is we're creating our Phaser 3 game instance, and so we're providing our configuration for our game, and then we have one scene that's associated with our game, and that's the main scene here. And so in our scene, uh, all we're doing is we're loading in some assets that we'll be using for this example, and so this will be our background and our animated ship. And then we're gonna go ahead and create those game objects when our scene starts. Uh, so we go ahead and create our background, and then we go ahead and create a sprite game object so we can have it animated, and this will be our ship. Finally, what we do is with our ship, we go ahead and add a tween to go ahead and have it animate across our scene uh, once our scene starts. And lastly, we have this utility function here uh, that we'll be referencing later, and so we'll cover this once we get to that in our code. So if you go ahead and start the project, uh, what you should see in your browser once it launches is we should see this example here uh, where our scene starts, we have our background, and now we have our ship animated across our scene. All right, so the first thing we need to do in our code is we need to go actually create a geometry mask. And so what a geometry mask is in Phaser is this is a special type of mask that can be applied to a game object. And this mask is made up of a graphics game object. And so what the mask allows us to do is it allows us to define which pixels will be visible on the target game object and which pixels will not. And so Phaser is going to use that graphics game object for determining that. And so as a basic example, when our scene starts, we have this circle. And that's going to be our graphics game object, just a very basic shape. And so with that circle, we're using the alpha values on that game object to determine for our scene what is actually visible. And so go ahead and do this in our code. There's a few different ways. What we're going to do is we're going to use the built-in factory for creating a circle. And the circle game object is one of the basic shape objects, and that uses the phaser game, and that extends the phaser graphics game object. So that's going to work for our mask. And so what we'll do in our code is we're going to come to our create method. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our to-do. And so the first thing we do is we want to create that shape. And so for this, we're just going to make a variable, we'll call it shape. We're going to set it equal to this. We'll do add to reference our factory. And then we're going to go ahead and do circle. And so now for our circle shape, we need to define our X and Y, where we want to be positioned in our game, as well as our radius, so how big our circle will uh, be. And so for this, we're just going to go ahead and reference the width uh, from our phaser scene. And so we'll be using our scale manager to grab that. And so with our width, we want to position it in the center. Uh, so we're going to divide it by two. Uh, same thing with our height. We'll grab that from our scale manager. We'll divide that by two. And now for our circle, what we want to do is we're just going to use our height and we're going to divide it by two. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save. And now with our shape, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a geometry mask from this. And so we'll make a new variable, we'll do const mask, and we're going to just reference our shape uh, object, and we're going to call the create geometry mask method. And so how this method works is as long as your game object extends the phaser graphics game object, the create geometry mask will go ahead and use that internal instance of the graphics to go ahead and create the mask here. And so the last thing you need to do with your mask is now we need to apply it to where we want to do our target. 
And so for our example here, we're going to apply it to our main camera and our scene. And so by applying a mask to our camera, we'll define what parts of our game are actually visible. And so to do that, we just need to reference our cameras. And so we'll do this.cameras. We're going to reference our main camera and we're going to call set mask. And now we want to go ahead and apply that mask that we created. So now when we save our game, we can see that something actually happened. And so what happened is on our camera, we applied our mask. And so by default, the alpha on the object that we applied is going to determine what's visible uh, in the target that this got applied to. And so because this is our visible area of our circle, this is what's visible to us in our scene. And then all the other pixels outside of that game object are no longer visible, and that's why we cannot see them in our scene here. All right, so now that we created our mask, the last thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna go ahead and listen for our events and create this nice transition when the scene starts. And so this is where that utility function comes in uh, that I referenced before. And so what the add scallop effect on scene start does is this function will take in our phaser three scene. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and listen for our created scene event. And this event will be fired when our scene is created. And once that happens, we're gonna go ahead and add a tween. And with our tween, we're gonna target our scaling properties on the game object that we uh, provide. And this is going to allow us to scale up that game object. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it start at zero so it's not visible. We're gonna scale up to 2.5 of its original size. And so then that way it gets bigger than our current view in our game. Finally, what we did is we're just gonna go ahead and wrap this in a promise so we can just wait for this to be finished. And then once it's done, we would be able to then to start our game uh, if we were making a game here. All right, so then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we just need to go ahead and call that function. So we'll come to our create method and after all of our logic, we'll go ahead and call our add scallop effect on scene start. We need to go ahead and pass, uh, pass in uh, our uh, scene instance, we'll do this. And now we need to go ahead and pass in the game object we wanna modify. And so this is going to be our circle uh, game object here. And then what I'm gonna do, since it's a promise, I'm just gonna use our then method and we're just gonna go ahead and do a console log to know when this is done. And so we'll do console log, scene transition done. And then finally, we're just gonna go ahead and add a catch uh, so that way we properly handle any errors uh, from our promise. And we're just gonna return undefined and we won't do anything with it. All right, if you go ahead and save, let's come back to our scene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And what we should see is now we should have our black scene, we have our circle, and then our scene becomes visible. And then finally, once it's completed, uh, we have our console log statement here. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.